And in this video, we're going to make a different sort of distinction between variable types. We're going to make a distinction between independent and dependent variables. So this is more of an issue for uh, research methodology, but there, it's really difficult to uh, have a disconnect between research methods and statistics. So basically, statistics uh, should be like the slave of research methods, meaning that the research design and the research method should inform what statistic a researcher chooses to analyze their data. But before you can do that, you have to understand uh, your variables and be able to uh, define and, and use your variables. So one distinction that's often useful, it depends on the sort of study, of course, but uh, is between uh, an independent and a dependent variable. So an independent variable is uh, sort of like an explanatory variable, a variable that's you'd, being used to explain another variable. And a dependent variable is a variable that is being explained or can otherwise be thought of as a dependent variable. Uh, in the context of an experimental design, an independent variable is a variable that is manipulated by an experimenter to determine whether or not it has an effect in the direction and strength of its effect on another variable, and that other variable is a dependent variable. So let's say we wanted to look at the effect of the presence versus absence of others on performance on some task, let's say typing whether or not you're a faster and more accurate typer or typist uh, in the presence versus the absence of other people. So the independent variable there would be uh, whether or not people are present and the outcome variable, actually I mentioned two outcome variables, the dependent variable would be let's just say typing speed. So we might manipulate whether or not people are present and see how that affects your typing speed which could be one dependent variable. We could have another dependent variable, which is typing accuracy. Uh, so again, a dependent variable is the variable that is measured, typically to see if some explanatory variable or independent variable has an effect on it or is at least related to it. Uh, so uh, the terms independent variable and dependent variable, some people will reserve them strictly for experimental designs whereas other people may use these terms a bit more usely, loosely and um, use independent variable to be any sort of explanatory variable and dependent variable to be any sort of outcome variable. There is another sort of like in-between variable called a quasi-experimental, let me fix the spelling on that mid-recording, uh, which is called a quasi-experimental independent variable. So this is an explanatory variable that is not necessarily manipulated or, or in some cases it can't be manipulated or it's just not feasible to manipulate it in the context of the study but it's measured and it's used to predict or assess the relationship between it and the outcome variable or the dependent variable. So for example if we wanted to see how coaching style, how the coaching style of, let's say, a soccer coach might affect player self-esteem. Uh, probably we won't be able to manipulate the coaching style of individual coaches, but we can measure it and hopefully classify it in a reasonably valid way and assess how different coaching styles affect uh, player self-esteem. So if you had like a coaching style like uh, Jason Garrett, who seems uh, to be uh, rather positive and encouraging. How does that affect self-esteem versus the coaching style of someone like Bill Parcells, who would often uh, curse out um, his players? Uh, but how would that affect their self-esteem? We're not necessarily talking about how that would affect uh, championships, because of course Jason Garrett has won zero, zero championships and Bill Parcells has won several and, and gone to several Super Bowls, but that's a topic for another day. Uh, in the context of uh, an experiment, we would often seek to isolate or hold constant um, variables outside of what we're manipulating. So these variables we might call extraneous variables. So extraneous variables can be thought of as any variable that's not being manipulated that might influence the dependent variable 
or the outcome variable, right? Dependent variable, outcome variable mean basically the same thing. Now, a particularly evil kind of extraneous variable is a confound. So a confound is an extraneous variable that varies systematically with our independent variable. So we do not know if it's the independent variable influencing the outcome or the confound influencing the outcome. So let's say we, we did the study with coaching style and self-esteem. Already we're on a bit of shaky ground because it's quasi-experimental. We probably can't manipulate a coach's coaching style. We're instead just measuring it. But let's say we found out that certain coaching styles uh, were more likely among certain socioeconomic status groups. Uh, so like a more demanding, a more authoritarian coaching style might be more common in lower socioeconomic status areas whereas a coaching style that's more like kind and gentle and coddling of the children might be more prevalent in high socioeconomic status areas. So if we found a difference in self-esteem across the different coaching styles, we wouldn't necessarily be able to say it's coaching style because coaching style is confounded with socioeconomic status. So we might find that people with higher socioeconomic status uh, have higher self-esteem regardless of the coaching style they encounter and people with lower socioeconomic status might uh, on average have lower self-esteem regardless of the coaching style that the child might encounter. So uh, in, in experimental and especially in quasi-experimental designs we have to be on the lookout for these confounds as uh, potentially very strong alternative explanations for any results we may have found. So here's one of my favorite slides that I've made in my entire life, uh, looking at the effects of having a study guide versus not having a study guide. So let's say I did an experiment, and my independent variable was study guide group. And randomly, I assigned half the class to receive a study guide, and the other half the class got everything the same in terms of the course, but did not receive a study guide. And I wanted to see how that might affect, let's say, the midterm grade. So my independent variable there is study guide group, it has two levels. My dependent variable is midterm exam score, which presumably is quantitative and has many levels. And there are many, many extraneous variables, more than I could possibly think of, uh, some of which I could control by holding constants. So for instance, I could do it in the same lecture, in the same class, make sure the exam is the same, same access to other materials. Uh, I could make sure that the researcher is blind to the condition so they're not treating the study guide group differently than the control group. Uh, to try to keep as many things isolated so that I can look at the effect of the IV, the, the study guide group, on the DV, the exam score. Now, of course, there's all sorts of things uh, that could influence exam score. So how often you study, whether or not you're ill, whether or not you've just been dumped, whether or not you refuse to read, whether or not you're stoned, whether or not you have test anxiety, whether or not your cat just died. So there's all these sort of extraneous variables that we would need to figure out a way to control, but that we couldn't actually hold constant in the usual sense of the term. So uh, that's what we'll discuss in the next mini lecture, how to hold those participant related variables uh, reasonably similar or constant across groups.